take time to be holy. Speak off with thy love. Abide in him always. And feed on his word. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing. His blessing to see. Take time to be holy. The world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be. Thy friends in thy conduct, his likeness shall see. Take time to be holy. Let him be thy guide. And run not before him. Whatever be time, in joy or in sorrow, still follow thy Lord. And looking to Jesus, still trust in his word. Take time to be holy, be calm in thy soul. Each thought and each temper beneath his control. Thus, led by his spirit, the fountains of love, thou shalt soon be fitted for service aboard. Let's pray that the Lord will speak to us today. God, speak to your children. Jesus' name we pray. Almighty Father, you have given us sufficient evidence that you are alive. You are with us. You have accepted us. You are the doer of all things that we do. God, you are telling us now that we shall fix our eyes on things above where you are and that that's where your promise is and pray that your children your ministers will understand this and henceforth their hearts shall be on you and heavenly reward in Jesus name we pray can be seated. The message we are considering is seek divine commendation and heavenly rewards in ministry. Seek divine commendation and heavenly rewards in ministry. Christianity is called or termed an heavenly calling. It's a call to go to heaven. It came from heaven, as I told you. It is a call to take people from earth to heaven. In Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1. We are for holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. Consider the apostle 
and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who had built the house had more honor than the house. For every house is builded by some man, but he that builded all things is God. Paul, in every way, is making people to know Jesus as God. He did not want the Jews to be confused with the title, the Son of God, to mean Jesus was lower than the Father. He's the God of himself, God himself. I and my Father are one person. Here, the Bible tells us what qualifies for heaven. He called it holy. The people that go to heaven are holy. Holy, holy brethren, those that will make it to heaven, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling. The calling is for heaven. It came from heaven. It concerns going to heaven. There is a place called heaven. Every nation has a headquarters. Yes, every business has a headquarters. If it's a global business. So, the business of Christianity has heaven as the headquarters. And it talks about Jesus being the leader, the apostle, the high priest of our profession is Jesus. After the manner of a man, the one ahead of us is Jesus. The one leading us to heaven is Jesus, who was faithful to him that appointed him. As a man, he was, a, he was faithful to God because God appointed him to come to the earth and he did as the father wanted he was faithful even as Moses also was faithful in all his house Moses did all that God wanted but this man referring to Jesus when you refer to Jesus as a man then you see him as an apostle, the leading apostle. You see him as a high priest, the one that goes between us and God. Wherefore, it says, for this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses. This man, Jesus, was counted for more glory than Moses. Moses, the Bible says, among the ch children born to me, there had not arisen anyone as great as John the Baptist. Which means, even Moses was not as great as John the Baptist by this testimony. Who saw Jesus among all that were sent to testify of Jesus as a prophet? John did not only prophesy, he saw the person he prophesied. Yes. So he had a greater witness, sure witness. He spoke not only of faith, but of sight, mixed together. Here he's standing among us, one that is mightier than I. I need to be baptized of you. Do you come to me to be baptized? John was talking about the person he saw. 
the other spoke of faith. Then the Lord says, For this one was counted worthy of more glory than Moses. Jesus was more glorious than Moses as a man than John the Baptist even. In so much as he who had built the house had more honor than the house. He was putting in this uh, parable of the house that the person that created Moses was Jesus. I am saying Jesus is greater than Moses that you respect. Why? It's like the owner of a house is more important. It's greater than the house. You may not understand you, but you will understand later that I mean the one that built up Moses, raised up Moses, commissioned Moses to that work was Jesus. Was Jesus, the creator of Moses. For every house is builded by some man in the physical. You can't find a house in the forest. If you find a house, then a man built it, not an animal. It did not exist by itself. A man built it. For every house is builded by some man. That's why I say, as for Moses, someone raised him up. Someone built him. Who is that? I told you it's Jesus. Now, he said, but he that built all things is God. The Jesus that built Moses, raised Moses, built all things, he is God. So, he is speaking here about the Godhead of Jesus. That Jesus is God. Christianity is an heavenly calling. The Lord enjoins us to lay our treasure above and expect our rewards from God in heaven. God is a rewarder. Apostle Paul declared that if the Christian ministry were for a reward on earth, whatever that reward was, then the ministers of Christ should have been miserable workers. Miserable. Yes. If there were no other reward than just these things on a right cars, have her money, have, that's miserable. Because you can have all those things and be miserable. No peace. There's no peace unto the wicked. Saith my God. For the rewards of eternal life, we are called to labor with God in the ministry of winning souls and bringing them to righteousness and holiness. It's for the reward of eternal life. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 6, verse 10 to verse 12. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have shot toward his name, in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end, that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. This God is a rewarding God. He rewards. If God is in your side, you will be happy. He will reward you for every suffering, for the tears of your eyes. God will reward you. He will wipe away the tears of your eyes. 
He will give you sufficient comfort. That is God. In the book of 2 Corinthians, God, a great God that the world, believe in him, submit to him, follow him, you see the world. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, I read verse 2 to verse 5. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. Who comforted, all, who comforted us in all our tribulations, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. But the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounded by Christ. God is very near to us to comfort us, to bless us, in all our sufferings, he is there to comfort you. He will reward you for your lacks. He will exalt you for the mockery of men. He will pay you for your suffering. You are not laboring for God in vain. He tells you so that you are not laboring in vain. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, my, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, you're not serving him in vain. He will visit you. Don't bother about car if you have not got it here. The Lord knows. When, you, when your time comes, he will give you. When your time comes to give you a house, he will give you. When your time comes to marry, he will give you. If you need what, he will give you. All that is good, he will not withhold them from you. So be very peaceful to serve the Lord. You need money, not for money's sake, but for God's sake, he will give you money. But now you don't have labor. Don't mind the little, little that is coming. Yes, in Jewel chapter 2, the Lord is saying there, promising you, it's not unrighteous to forget your, your labor. Joel, chapter 2, I read from verse 21. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things in your ministry. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he had given you the former rain moderately. So, things are going moderately, not much, but he has not denied you your food. He has not denied you your food. He has not denied you necessity. It's only you don't have as much as you want, but that's how he's beginning with you. There's suffering, but he always stands there in the suffering to ensure you eat, to ensure you drink, to ensure you, you are healed, you receive strength, you move forward. Now, see the promise. He says, For he had given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain. The former rain and the later rain in the first month, is, they're going to be double. There's going to be a double thing. And the floors shall be full of wheat. And the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. 
I will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten. The canker womb and the caterpillar and the palmer womb, my great army which I sent among you, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. And that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. You will never be ashamed. God says, I should tell you that you will never be ashamed. God said, I should tell you among your relations, among the children of your father, the children of your mother, you will never stand there in shame. No, he will, he will deal wondrously with you. Wondrously because you think nothing will happen again. They are thinking nothing will happen again. Hmm. It's like a man. After his master's degree, he went to do the work of God. His relations were saying, you will be picking oranges that have been sucked and thrown away on the street. You will be picking and sucking. Where will you get food? I allow them to say that. God will surprise them. When they shall be sending their young ones to go to you and say, give us to eat, they will know that God is not a man. Then you will say, he told me. You will remember, he told you. Who told you that ministers of God are beggars? You will never beg. Amen. Yes, in fact, after you have finished the ministry on earth, you are going to inherit eternity. Eternity of bliss. Eternity of perfection. Eternity of comfort. Eternity of light. Eternity of satisfaction. Eternity of glory. Eternity of power. Eternity of praise. Eternity of exaltation. Eternity, eternity, eternity like God. Paul said in the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 4, when he finished his ministry, see what he said from verse 6 to verse 8. He said, For I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. To depart from this earth. The time of my departure. Listen to that. Listen what I told you of that man. That God says, don't be crying that you came home. Nobody welcomed you with excitement. Don't, this is not home. The earth is not home. This earth is not my home. I am just a passing through. Somewhere beyond the blue, the angels beckon me to heaven open door. And I can feel at home in this world. Anymore. Lord, I know I have no friend like you. If heaven is not my own, oh Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me to heaven. Feel at home in this world anymore. The Lord is saying, I'm soon coming to take you home. I am soon coming to take you home. 
This world is not your home. That's why Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, plentiful things, plentiful pleasures, plentiful satisfaction, plentiful peace, plentiful comfort, plentiful promotion, plentiful delight, plentiful excitement, plentiful everything. I'm coming to take you. The, he, the Spirit of God is moving around the world and is preparing people for it now. The Holy Ghost is moving around the world and is preparing people for heaven. Is preparing people for heaven. Amen. All over the world. What you see going on is of the Holy Ghost. All over the world. The revival you see moving now is of the Holy Ghost preparing for coming of Jesus. You're seeing happening in Holy Mo now. Right now in Holy Mo. These revelations you are hearing now is the move of the Holy Spirit. The glory of the Lord is among us. As the waters cover the sea, run here in our midst. Right here in our midst. Right here in our midst. You are seeing the presence of God. You are seeing the glory of the Lord. There is a mighty revelation of the glory. Amen. I am ready to be offered. That's what Paul said. And he continued. He said in verse 7, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. A good fight. A good fight against Satan. And agents of the devil. A good fight against the devil. Demons. Witches and wizards. A good fight against witchcraft and occultism that doesn't want you to go to heaven. You fight. You opened up and sp spoke out. It was a fight. It was a good fight. Now, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. That which God called me to do, appointed me to do. As Jesus finished his own and announced it, here Paul finished his own and announced it. I finished my course. The greatest statement is, I have kept the faith. Some finish and they mark their paper, they failed. They didn't do well. They finished, but they didn't do well. 
and so they couldn't get the prize but Paul said I finished according to the standard given to me and now he said henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day and not to me only but unto all them also that love his appearing it shall be so over all of us as we continue to serve Jesus but why are, do we have polluted ministers that are polluting the world What's their reason? If this is the hope set before us, if this is who God is to us, what about these polluted ministers? Are they not, are they not aware of this? Are these promises not for them? Paul said, not only for me, but for them that love is appearing. Are they not loving is appearing? Polluted ministers will give you reasons why these people are doing so seven reasons number one their call to ministry is not by god that's why they are not looking to god to reward them look at it in jeremiah chapter 23 i read verse 21 verse 22 then verse 14 to 17 jeremiah chapter 23 Verse 21 and 22, it goes, I have not sent these prophets, yet they run. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil ways. And from the evil of their doings. You see now, why should they wait for God to reward them? Did he call them? They are aware. The Lord revealed what T.B. Joshua was telling the people. He said, do every evil you can do against them. And if he tells you anything, the original God, don't obey. Go, do what the master said and said, even against the original God. Because he's not the one that called you. So, he is not the one that called them. These prosperity pastors that are gathering all the money, giving you laws and principles, using various powers to get at you, God didn't call them. If they don't get their pay now, where would they get their pay from? Where would they get their pay from? That's where they need it now. And they would do all to give to receive their pay in verse 25 to 27 the bible says i have heard what the prophet said that prophesied lies in my name saying i have dreamed i have dreamed how long shall this be in the heart of these prophets that prophesy lies yeah they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams which they tell every man to his neighbor as their fathers have forgotten my name for bear can you see they use dreams since you believe that the Lord speaks through dreams so they show you the Lord spoke to me all every one of them speaks very often of the Lord the Lord told me brother the Lord told me I should tell you sister the Lord told me every they, in fact, he said, they prophesy to you the deceit of their heart. They use these names to capture you. He said, I didn't send them. These people were telling you it is the Lord. The Lord told me, I, the Lord told me, the, in fact, I saw a dream. It is that I never sent them. That is why they're exploiting you. They're using all this. They're prophesying lies. They're telling you lies. They gather your money because I have no reward for them. Their names are not in the register. I didn't send them. You see them running very far. I never send them. 
That is why they're polluting the church for rewards. If they want to get their rewards because I, they, God doesn't know them. Again, what? They come to you because of secular and theological learning. They have acquired some secular learning. They have acquired their theolo theological learning. Hence, they feel they are the authorities of the law. They feel the knowledge of God is in their heart because they go to school. Sinner, drunkards go to theological school and remain the same. Witches and wizards go and attend theological school. They remain in their witchcraft, but now they have certificate. They are certificate and have the authority now to pastor. They have authority now to be overseers. They refer to the university they went to. I was in this university, or oh, some of them are professors of learning. They have, they are professor this, professor this, doctor this. So when they come to the pulpit, you, and they talk about their own, what they have acquired, what they have learned. Now, everybody submits to them. They challenge every other person. Who school did you go? Who school did your pastor go? See them challenging, wondering about Jesus. In the book of John chapter 7, John chapter 7, verse 14 to 17. Look at them talk here. Now, about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and talked. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man let us have never learned? This man didn't go to school. He didn't go to primary school. He didn't go to secondary school. He didn't go to theological school. How is the man speaking like this? Is it to honor him? Is it to, go to give glory to God? No, it's to disdain him. You're disdaining the creator of schools. You're disdaining the, the, the founder of knowledge. You are disdaining the ancient of wisdom. Because he didn't go to school. Can you see that? The, and some of the members also feel that because our pastor went to school. Yeah, he has the word. Now, see it again in the book of Acts of Apostles. Chapter 4, verse 13. Acts chapter 4, verse 13. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. They marveled, and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Unlearned. Is it that these people could not speak? They could speak. Is it that these people could not read? They could read. But they were not people of high educational standard. They were not people of theological, educational qualification. So, how do you look at them? These are ignorant men. These are unlearned men. How are they doing this? How can somebody who didn't go to school make a cripple rise up to war? We don't get the name of Jesus from school. We get the name of Jesus from the Bible. We don't get power from school, theological school. We get power from the Holy Ghost. We don't get inspiration from formal learning. We get inspiration from the master of knowledge, the owner of knowledge, the king of kings and the lord of lords, the, uh, the owner of knowledge, wisdom, understanding. He said, counsel is mine. I have understanding and I have strength. He is the one that gives us inspiration. Yes. Yeah. But these people are boasting of their theological knowledge. They're boasting of their theological attainment. And as a result, they deceive the people. <laughs> as uh, Momelinda said, the man, who said, the man was bringing Greeks. They bring, in the original Greek, in the original Hebrews, you fold your hand and say, this man has gone to Greek. This man has gone to Hebrews now. It's in the original Hebrews, the word trousers means war. Hey. So it means 
women should not go to war. Put that interpretation into that sentence. A man should not put on that which belonged to a man. And we belong it to women. Neither should a woman, should women put on that which belong it to men. He that does so is abomination. Put woe inside. Replace, replace them. <laughs> I'm telling you, the Bible says, the letter kill it. It is the spirit that giveth love. Therefore, we are inviting theological people. Thank God you have known, but submit to Jesus. Submit to the revelation. Submit to the working of the Holy Ghost. Because it is, it is the Holy Ghost that is calling people for service. It is the Holy Ghost that is empowering people for the, for the work of God, for the ministry. Therefore, submit to the Holy Ghost and come to do end time service for Jesus. That's what we're saying. Don't allow scripture to interpret theology, to interpret away the word of God. Interpret away baptism in the Holy Ghost. Interpret away original baptism by immersion. Interpret away the Holy Communion. Interpret away the real no matter salvation, sanctification. Then don't allow theological, theological knowledge. Many of those people in theological school are not born again. Yes, and the Bible tells us that there is no possibility for them to receive the knowledge of Christ. Not possible. Not possible because they are carnal. Again, this God that they say, the Lord sent me to you, the Bible says that God is their stomach. Look at it. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 17 to 19. Philippians. When somebody says, the Lord told me, the Lord sent me to you. That's stomach. He's talking about his stomach. That sent him to you to collect money. Look at it in Philippians chapter 3. I read verse 17 to 19. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk, so as ye have asked for an example. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you, even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is who? Whose God is what? Their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. That is it. The God that is moving them about to preach is their stomach. They're looking for money. The revelation came out recently. Rapture took place, and one of the leaders, who didn't go for the rapture, uh, why didn't you go? You know, we were here for our stomach. Ours is just to eat. Continue to eat. The people have gone. When the saints shall march to heaven with Jesus as the leader, marching as onward soldiers, yes, Onward soldier, singing and rejoicing to join the glory Oh, no, had I no, had I no, 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 the sinner's voice I hear. Gone, gone, they have gone, they have gone, marching to join the glory. Oh, oh and I know. The man was sitting there, he said, me, I was here, but I was just for eating, eating food, and now they have gone. What will you eat now? You will eat fire. You will eat fire. You will eat stone. The devil will give you stone to break. Get yourself ready for eternal life. The reward of the gospel is not on earth. Don't fix your eyes on earth. Fix your eyes in heaven and get there too. Get there too. It is not for houses and vehicles. 
that on earth why are you using evil means to get it why are you telling all lies why are you carrying god's money in falsehood be careful you shall be left behind in the rapture so that's what the word of god is telling us the love of money some people it is the love of money that makes them corrupt you see them preaching and telling all lies using all games for lies joining people receiving power all for money butting themselves with every kind of thing to make their tongue sweet so that they can get money look at it in the book of first timothy chapter 6 verse 9 and verse 10 first timothy chapter 6 verse 9 and verse 10 but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition verse 10 everybody want to go for the love of money is the root of all evil which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But what is the Lord telling you? Verse 11, one to God. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, make me what should you do verse 12 fight the good fight of faith lay hold on eternal life where unto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses what charge do i give you i give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickened all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession. Verse 14, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. Keep yourself from money, from the love of money. Follow the right order to get money for anything, family need, whatever. Follow the right order. Contact your leaders and tell them if there's any need. The money of God is not yours. Don't use it to buy personal property. If you're going for a journey, don't carry God's money and go and buy property for your family. No, you're under salary. Why are you carrying God's money to buy property for your family? You are to account for that money to the last penny. Last penny. A woman, check your husband that your Christianity will not be for in vain because you're eating and drinking from God's money. And you know that your husband is getting this thing without order, without following the rule. Where should all of you eat poison in the house? So pray for him that he should not feed you people with poison because God will not spare one of you with your children altogether. Apart from that, your lives on earth will be frustrated. The lives of your children will be frustrated. Apart from that, heaven will not know you. Therefore, respect God's property. Follow the order. Talk to God. Call on God. He will feed you. I told you God is not unrighteous to forget your, your labor of law. What you are doing for him. But he will not respect you if you go the way of sin. He will have no regard for you if you turn a liar in his service. So take note of that. Put away from you the love of money. Don't be running up and down. They invited me here. They invited me here just because you will go and gather money. You will gather poison. If not the Holy Ghost that is allowing you to go for ministry, to go here and there, and you for money's sake, if I go here, if I go here, you will die on the way. The devil will get hold of you and damn your soul with money. 
the love of money is the root of all evil is the cause of lie is the cause of cheating is the cause of envy it is the cause of murder it is the cause of many things the root the provocation of many evil manslaughter occultism it is the reason for many things that have been done in ministry the love of money the love of money people convey this thing and appears true with many sorrows the love of money please don't build a house if you have not gotten the money to build a house hey, but all my colleagues have built, have built house do you know how they build their own house some build righteously some not righteously your own time has not come you have not gathered enough money way way the lord has not asked you a house for heaven he has never asked you to get, show him your vehicle before you enter heaven. Therefore, be careful, be peaceful. Having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Otherwise, let's go to Jerusalem. Let's go among the Jews. You will show me the house of Paul. You will show me the house of Timothy. You will show me the house of Peter. Show me the house John built in the land of Israel. Go on, let's go and show it. Or go and show me what, what, what thing they left on earth. That you, because of this earth you are dying because of this earth i don't want to be ashamed you forsake god you go to do very various kinds of dirty business you tell lies in business you cheat in business just because you want to get money to do this some of you you get money for immorality yes this is not of god therefore keep yourself away from the love of money if the salary is not enough take it to god and go to the dealership and say sir this 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 and that if there's more money they will give you god will touch even the wicked man that you that you are serving on that to increase your salary so please follow the rule if a man strives for mastery he is not crowned unless he striveth lawfully that's the word again desire for popularity in the book of 10 john verse 9 these are the things that brings corruption desire for popularity 10 john i read verse 9 the scripture tells us here saying i wrote unto the church but thy truth is who love it to have the preeminent among them receive it as not wherefore if i come i will remember his deeds which he doeth practicing against us with malicious ways and not content therewith neither doth he himself receive the brethren and forbidden them that would that would and casted them out of the church. Diotrephes was a man that exalted himself in the church. My brethren, while we love zeal, let's watch those who are exalting themselves. He is in the choir, he is in usher, he is children's church, he is this. Please, why is he in everything? Instead of seeking self-recognition, we are putting eyes on you. Why must you be the one? Who will do this? I'm the one. Who will do this? I'm the one. Who will do this? I'm the one. We're watching you. Are you doing that by God? Or you want to show preeminence? Let the people see I am here. I must be recognized here. Diotrephes, younger brother. Diotrephes, sister. This church will show you that it's not for diotrephes. No. It's not for your preeminence. It's not for your exaltation. No. It is to exalt Jesus. We who are in the leadership are dealing very gently that we don't carry your attention because the person to be recognized is Jesus. The person to be worshipped is Jesus. The person to be adored and praised is Jesus. But ma, canal ma, selfish ma, full of ambition, want to make himself magnified in the church. Look at this man, Diotrephes, John the beloved. Say, I wrote. This is John that saw Jesus. Diotrephes, where were you? When Jesus was on earth, where were you? 
Were you even born at that time? And that this man was with Jesus. They, they called him the disciple that Jesus loved. This man lay his head on the breast of Jesus, in the bosom of Jesus. Diotrephes, where were you? That John wrote, you will never fear John. You will never respect authority because you want to show how great you are in the assembly of God. How mighty you are. Everybody is afraid of you. Oh Lord, discover them wherever they are. I say, God, discover them wherever they are. We will move the atrophies like this. I'm telling you, I'll scatter you off. John said, I am coming. I will, sh I will show him that the church of God is not for him. I will show him that the church of God is not for his glory. No, not for your glory. Not for your glory. It's for the glory of the Lord. If you have come to serve with us, humble yourself. He that humble let himself shall be exalted. But if you exalt yourself, hmm, the way they will push you down, your bone will break. I say your bone will break. Let's deal humbly. Make sure the flesh is not the one guiding you here. And you to be careful. You who are righteous, don't give this church over to fleshly activity. Fleshly persons that will lead you to doom. They are not under inspiration. They are not. Whatever oratory they make, the Holy Ghost is not there. And those words will not serve anybody. Therefore, let's make sure the church is in the hand of the Holy Spirit. Not in the hand of diatrophy. See, this man, when brethren, I send brethren, righteous people, to your place to help you exhort the church, Diotrephes is not here. I send them to walk around that place and that you people should release helpers for them. Diotrephes said no. But some people decided on their own that they will help them. Diotrephes want them that if anybody leaves this church to say he's going to help anybody because John sent him, I will put him out of synagogue. And you didn't jump out of that synagogue to show Diotrephes that it's not synagogue, it is Jesus you are following. Yes, it's not synagogue. The days come, said the Lord, that they that worship him must not worship him in mountain Abana or in Jerusalem. But they that worship the Lord must worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. For the Lord seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. They that must worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But some of you, you get lost into denomination. Hey, my, den my pastor said, uh, I should never read that book. My pastor said, I should not go to that church. That if I go, he will send me out of church. Please, in the eyes of the pastor, jump out of that church. Because you're serving God and not a church. You're serving God and not a denomination. Listen, I say this, but let me say it. Because God is higher than man. The Lord said, because Pastor Kumui has resisted this work has resisted this revelation, has resisted holiness revival movement, and the resistance is going on up to today. Jesus said, I will make people to go to Pastor Komoye and say, I am going to holiness revival movement, and then he shall go. The Lord says he will do it, and it's happening. It's happening. Many people, they say, choose deeper life or holiness movement. I choose holiness revival movement. I'm going now. The Lord said, it shall happen. These are days in which people worship the Father, not by the name of denomination, but they worship Him in spirit and in truth. For the Lord is seeking such to worship Him. The Lord is seeking such to worship Him. So, which bishop, which one? Do they have eternal life for you? Do the general overseers have eternal life for you? Therefore, the Bible says, if it is your right eye that will cause you to go to hell, pluck it. I say pluck it. Everybody put your hand in your right eye. I mean, yes, but don't remove your eye. Don't remove your eye because it's not a physical thing. I say, block it out. Nobody should block you for Je from Jesus. Fear no man. Fear no man. You have come to this lie. 
God has opened your eyes to this life. Listen, this is a higher ministry. As Jesus obtained a more excellent sacrifice, excellent ministry compared to the high priest. This is a higher ministry. And, and as a result, if you are in any church, you got this lie, you're preaching it in your church, the, of the people, the denomination say, eh, what, what, what do you say? That the people should remove their earrings, women should not wear trousers, we will remove you. <laughs> we will remove you. Be getting ready. Be, be fast. Be fa because actually you are living, you are living in that place. Uh, we will remove you. Be fine. You know, remember I said, no earring will take you to heaven. Nobody who has worn the earring has ever gone there. Don't remove your trousers. Don't use trousers again as a woman. Be fast. Because you are going to carry them. As they are saying, go. You are carrying your converse out of that place. You will be carrying them out of that place to heaven. It is like you redeem them from hell. You are redeeming them from hell. And to say, eh, my church say I should not. The Lord shut up that mouth there of a hypocrite. That mouth of a coward. You are a coward. The Lord brought you and shot you eternal life. You are going back like that rich man that said, What must I do to be saved? Jesus shot him the way. Thou shalt do this. Thou shalt sell those things and come and follow me. He said, Ah, it's too hot. Where are those cattle now? Where are those riches now? If it is too, if they refuse to run here, we're waiting for you. If they refuse your ministry in your denomination because you have changed, please let us know. Let us know. You belong to us. I say you belong to us. Come, that man that was sent away from the synagogue, didn't Jesus look for him? It was Jesus that carried his glorious person looking for him and found him. Do you believe in the Son of God? Who is he, Lord, that I might believe? The one that is embracing you now. I am the one. Lord, I believe. Coming out of the synagogue was necessary to meet with Jesus personally and get transformed and your name entering the book of life and then you become rapture ready. Refuse to come out of that synagogue. But as long as the Lord gives you grace, persecution has not come past this gospel. Nobody has authority over church except Jesus. Start preaching this gospel in that church. Go now. Go and change those things. Even if you have been baptizing people, putting water on their head from today, it has ended. You are going to say it's by immersion. As you saw it in the Bible, if your denomination says no, let them ask you to leave. Go and live and do the right thing that will give you heavenly reward. Otherwise, if you fear people, the Bible says, see that you, don't, you, you are not afraid of their faces. Otherwise, I will confound you before them. That's what Jesus is saying. Therefore, be bold. Go and do the right thing. Go and do the right thing. Answer me, I will do the right thing. Since the days of John the Baptist. Tell me what it means. Are you ready to take it by force? Are you ready to take it by force? Hallelujah. That is it. Is this popularity they are looking for that is blocking people? And I am telling you who are blocked, who have been blocked, that break through that. That blockade is of the devil. That blockade is of the devil. Come. You were, quick, you were even late. To, you wanted to enter into this hall. And you were late. And then somebody said, no, wait here, wait here. You waited and you thought authority has come from the international director. That people should wait. People should, you were waiting. You were, you, somebody came and told you, what are you waiting? He said, eh, this man here said he should wait. Who is the man? Uh, this is uh, 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 the younger brother to the security man in the gate. He came looking for his brother and he's asking you to wait. He said, eh? The younger brother to the security man is asking me to wait here. When I'm supposed to be inside, you would turn like this and say, don't try it again, you hear? <laughs> and you jump inside. Let no man, local man, ask you not to serve the Lord again. Let no man. Local man, 
Leave his money for him. The Lord has better money for you. Leave his position for him. The Lord has better position for you. Hallelujah. Yes. These people, they implore human wisdom and politics to run the church, the Christian church and ministry. These people, that God is not there with them. All they are doing is with human wisdom, politics. They are using. They transfer. Who gives more money? You are not making any money in that place. Leave that place. Human wisdom. And they know what to say. Look at what the Bible says in James. Chapter 3. Carnal wisdom that they are using. Verse 13. To 18, who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your heart, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. But wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good works, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that will make peace. Or that of them that make peace. They carve wisdom to do things. Carnal wisdom. God is not there. Some of you carry your ministry and get destroyed where God is not there. Your patience has no reward. Your submission has no reward. You are in a place where God is not there. If you are doing well in this place, they transfer you from there to the bush. You say, well, I will go patiently. If you are bearing the fruit of righteousness, praise God. If you are not, as you are going in murmuring to that place, no reward for you. Your suffering is no reward, has no reward. Because when dogs are fighting each other, don't go and separate them. Otherwise, you will receive injury. And that injury you receive from separating two dogs has no reward because none of them has eternal life with them. You hear? So be very wise. Why wasting your energy where there's no life? Why wasting your strength among people who don't know God? Except the Lord is sending you there and say, walk it out for me here. Then there must be fruit. Then you must be producing fruit to show that I am here. I'm secretly here like Obadiah in the kingdom of Ahab and, and, and Jezebel. I've hid a hundred prophets in the curve and I'm getting food always to feed them there. Because although I'm here in this dark kingdom, I'm achieving something. Otherwise, you're in that kingdom and they are rather the one suffocating you. What are you there for? You will die and never go to heaven. Go and look for your people. Look for your people. Them that serve God out of a pure heart. And serve God fruitfully. And serve God righteously. And serve God rewardably. That's what I'm saying. Not following politicians in the church. They speak lies. Commit immorality. And give lying testimonies and account of their work. In Jeremiah chapter 23, I'm telling you, the reason why corruption is in the church, the reason, the ministers are not of God. See what they do, because they don't have any reward coming from God. Everybody is struggling for his own. When a trailer carrying big load, and the trailer has, has accident, and everything falls down. What do you think the villagers that come around are doing? What will they be doing there? In fact, they will say it's God that brought it for them. <laughs> Everybody is carrying his own. Everybody is carrying his own. Is anybody carrying back to guy looking for the owner? Are they gathering it together for their owner? They say be fast before the owner comes. Move, be fast. A man will bring his children. Take 
run quickly take up quickly come back take run this is what they are doing they are not the owner they were not employed they are destroying the thing quickly before they are before the rapture before they die these are the ministers you have they are not the owners of the ship they are not they are not so they do everything they can do yes everything in jeremiah chapter 23 i read verse 14 jeremiah 23 verse 14 yes the bible tells us saying He said, I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem an horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers that none doth return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants thereof are as Gomorrah prophets of Jerusalem immoral wicked people like Sodom and Gomorrah yeah they speak by seducive spirits they speak by seducive spirits they employ demons so that their words <laughs> should be fantastic one of the pastors of deeper life told me a story long time he said in the city where he was pastoring the pfn said they were going to have a gathering and they came to him and said since your church is large we will have the gathering in your church yeah to worship god and bring people to know the lord and then he accepted he accepted it because he thought it would give glory to God. <laughs> These people are wise. So they said the program started either on Tuesday to end up on Saturday. Then, Tuesday, a wonderful message was preached. They can even allow him to preach one. Preach one. They said, but uh, is it on? The program was to finish on Friday or so. On Friday, they said, a man is coming from Akwaibom. That man is coming to raise money for God. Hmm. The man was busy preparing himself to come and raise money for who? They know the God they're talking about. So, everything went well. Oh, Jesus. Oh, glory. And then Thursday... Well, it Friday or so was when the man now came to raise money. At this time, the deeper level was prepared for a great conference, I mean, crusade. And this man had been struggling. Give, raise money. Our leader is coming. All they were able to raise was around 800,000. With all noise, fasting, prayer, and pleading. Then, <laughs> on Friday, the acquire man appeared. And when he took over uh, the pulpit and started to speak about money and God, the type of power that took over that environment they are, my deeper love friend and pastor was watching until the man said, yes, it is time now. We are bringing your money for God. Now, you have two million, two million. Now, okay, yes, two million for Jesus. Can you be coming? Can you be coming? Members of his church were coming for two million. He said, what is happening? He was watching it. <laughs> what? Come. Yes, 1.5, 1 million. Everybody was coming. The place was getting filled. Yes, 500,000. Hey, people were coming. Yes, 300,000. Yes, until the man came to 10,000. And he, the pastor's wife also arrived for, for 10,000. The man said, something has happened here. He, he went and found his state of my church. Sir, something is happening in my church. Something is happening. 
He said, stop that man, stop that man. Before they say, stop that man, the man has gathered his money. He said, the rest should go and meet him in the hotel. They should go and meet him in the hotel. That is, he struggled to stop you. That power came from where? Seducive spirits and doctrines of devils. And that's what they go about. You don't know when you have given your money. You don't know when the money from your heart pocket comes out. It's by power. It's by demonic power. And they will tell you how much money is in your pocket. A story was told of a young man. I think he's in a bar or so. That in the market, his friend gave him 30,000. I said, go and give my wife. I'm not coming now. So I, when he left the market and was going home, there was a crusade somewhere. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. He just moved to that crusade to see what is going on. The man of God on the pulpit knew that he had 30,000. Yes, you are here. A friend just gave you 30,000 in the market to give his wife. The Lord has told me, come and prove the Lord with that 30,000. Drop it in the offering. Before you reach that house, miracle. Multiplication is coming on your way. The Lord told me, the Lord told me. You have heard that a friend gave me 30,000. This must be Jesus in Dito. He carried the 30,000 and went and gave to the God of that preacher. Boom. And waited miracle didn't come. He was going slow, slow to the house. Whether miracle would meet him. <laughs> miracle didn't come until he arrived, he arrived at that. At, what will you say now? What will you tell the, the wife of this man now? You won't tell him anything because the wife didn't even know that you collected money to give her. Your friend is coming. Shameful lie. It's because of the demonic people. That's what they're doing and destroying you. Apart from just that you give them their money, they give you demons. That is how you live. That is how the church of God gets weakened. That is how the church of God gets impoverished. That's why Jesus is calling you to come out of that place. I said, come out from among them. I said, come out from among them. Don't enrich ministers of Satan. Don't. And some of you, when you come to the house of God, where righteousness is, you are waiting for us to use witchcraft to get your body. Because when you say, come and give offering, no, you can. even registration you will not do. Because they are already used to telling you lies before you can give. We will not tell you lies here. We want people delivered to give freely because money of those under bondage has no meaning. Only those who are free that love God with all their hearts. That's why you don't see force here. That's why you even don't see our attention being given to money here. We want to give you the word and set you free. At least by this time you should have been free. Don't you think so? Then in the next few hours you can now give God offering. And your offering will be clean money. It will be money of people really showing thanks, giving out of their heart. We bring sacrifice of praise. Of the Lord. As we offer her. As liberated people, as liberated people, singing one more time in sacrifice of praise amen amen breathe into the heart of the Lord as we offer
That is when you go for your rest and are coming, you will be coming with sacrifice of praise to God. Sacrifice of thanksgiving. It's not induced by lying lips or demons, but out of your free heart. A man like Brett, a man that has been blessed by God, a man made joyful because he's seen the works of God happily. He's seen his Lord being magnified. He's praising Jesus. He wants to support this work. He wants to support this work. You are free to support this work in righteousness. You are free to come up and say, I will support this work. Even if I don't have the money here, I'm going to do it. God will welcome you. But we're not looking for money from demonized people people who are liars no so that is what I'm saying these people are dealing by the devil their service is a corrupt service they do not know God and the Lord Jesus Christ they cannot teach the true gospel because it is spiritually designed the true gospel is spiritually designed and they are carnal they are in the flesh. They that are in the flesh cannot please God. It is not possible for a mami watama to preach the gospel of Christ. It's which gospel? It is not possible for the secretary of witches and wizards in the city to preach this gospel in the name of being a minister. It can never work. He cannot understand it. His brain is not fashioned for it. It is not canal. He can't receive the inspiration from God. He can't. You are sitting under him, playing that game. You are sitting under vanity. God is not there. God is not there. Yes. Their works are carnal, works of the flesh. They cannot please God. They commit immorality. They carry you for immorality. They, they, carry, they poison you, hypnotize you, kill, all to increase their ranking in the devil's realm. So it's a terrible thing. They employ human wisdom and politics to do all these things, to run this church, to run people, to confuse people, to divide people. That's what they do. That's what they do. Yes, they cannot. They cannot. They resist God's authority. They resist the children of God. They blaspheme the name of the Lord. Blaspheme them. Blaspheme the name. Discourage the people. They tell them, no, 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 don't speak in tongues in this place. No, 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 your prayer is too much. No, that prayer, we can't take it here. That prayer, we cannot take it here. Satanic ministers. Your prayer is disturbing them. It's affecting them in their meeting in the night. Your night vigil is, is giving them trouble. That's what he said. No, don't do night vigil. Don't, please don't. We don't need it. Uh, why are you crying? Why, why are you crying? They, they have many reasons to block righteousness. This, the people are suffering. And as if anything, they are tied to the place. Jesus is coming. They are on their way to doom. A blind leading the blind. Where are they going? That's why God is opening your eyes. God is opening your eyes. Appreciate him. Don't think we're playing that politics here. What, what, what? No, we're not playing politics. Appreciate God. He has opened your eyes. He has opened your eyes. He has brought you here. He wants you, to, he wants you to be saved. He wants to use you to save others. In Jesus' name. Finally, work for divine commendation and heavenly reward. Work for it. God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Serve him. Work for him with heavenly reward in mind. Walk according to standard so you may please him with your service. Now, walking with heavenly reward in mind, walking for divine commendation, I give you seven ways. Number one, seek his glory and not your own glory. You notice what I always do here. I never take glory from you. I'm not looking for it, for it in you. No. Peter never took it for Cornelius, from Cornelius. He said, give God the glory. Give God the glory. And Jesus demonstrated it in his, in his ministry on earth. When someone came to him and said, good master. He said, who is good but God alone? 
He's teaching human beings. Is he not the God that is good? But he's teaching human beings. He's teaching his disciples. When man brings glory, take it to God. Go and give God. Go and give God. Come. You drove your master in a, a special car. You are the driver. But the people thought that since you are the one steering, do, do, turning the steering, you are the owner of the car. And said so they came to you and said, God, Ranka Dede, you are a great man. Wonderful. How did you get this car? Hey, you mean only few people have this car? Don't be saying, hey, God is there. <laughs> Come, is you your car? <laughs> Tell them it is for my master. As you see me now, I'm just a driver. He said, ah, if I say I am a driver, the man will despise me. You want to take glory where you have no son? You want to take master's glory? The Lord says, my glory will I not give another. Do you want to take God's glory? People are praising him for what he's doing. And they, some of them are looking at your eyes instead of directing him to where God is. I say, give it to God. You are taking glory, he will smite you. If your master knows that this is what you're doing, you've lost your job. Those people will see you in the best car. The next time you'll be trekking somewhere in the streets. They say, ah, sir, what about your car? What will you tell him? Tell them at that time? Liar. Look at it in the book of John, chapter, chapter 5. Verse, John chapter 5, verse 45. No, 44 rather. John chapter 5, verse 44. The Bible tells us, saying, How can ye believe which receiveth honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Come, seek the honor that only God can give. Don't receive honor from me. If you want commendation of God, if you want heavenly reward, focus your eyes on me, on God rather, not on me. Some of these men have flattery titles. Job said, I, as I live, I shall not give flattery titles to people. They give you flattery words. When the people wanted to use King Darius, to remove the best man out of his kingdom, to kill him. They came to him and said, we, since we live, we never saw a king that ruled excellently like you, O Darius. Therefore, we made a decree to, we want you to make a decree to, we just want to give you honor. We want to promote you from the realm of men to God. Let nobody offer prayer to any other personality except you for one moment. Just to honor your, you are great, you are great. And the people is, eh, wonderful. So these people have honored me like this. <laughs> they have something behind them. They want to remove Daniel. The man signed and came later to discover that these are a bunch of wicked people that have come to him to deceive him with honor. And now we're removing the best man to collapse his kingdom. Hey! It was the living God that delivered him. Otherwise, those people had succeeded. Even when he wanted to deliver Daniel, they said, King, the people who came in humility and praise came now with frown faces and wrinkled faces to the king. King, remember the law of patience and mercy. That the signature of the king cannot be altered. Not even by the king himself. You cannot. Otherwise, we will remove you. You are, you, you are bringing shame to this kingdom. If you alter this thing, you will be gone. After, from God to gone. That is it. It was God that delivered. So, don't receive glory of me. Be careful with the praises of me. Many people that God took them to heaven, to hell, 
and gave them revelations. They came to speak wonderfully. Human beings started to say, let me touch you. Let me touch you. Let me touch you. Somebody that saw Jesus. Where are they now? They have gone. Go and find out where are they. Our beloved sister is because the Lord pushed him to a man who would teach her all the word and be doing like, hey, obey, obey, you obey, it, obey. It. Yes, don't, don't, don't. That's why she's still alive. That's why she's still there. Otherwise, she would have been gone because of this human praise. People are doing. Do you see her receiving praise? Do you see her receiving praise? No. It's because of the knowledge of the world. We stand there. But this one who refused mentorship have all of them gone. All. Because of praise. You want commendation of God? You want heaven? Refuse human praise. Give it to God. If you cannot say it with your mouth, say it in your heart. And maybe circumstance made it that you can't say it with your mouth. Let your heart utter and say, God is for you. God is for you. Yes. Let me tell you this. When I was writing this book, Divine Revelation of God's Holiness and Judgment, which now is escaping hellfire and entering heaven made simple, at Divine, at divine Revelation, I was putting the name of Michael Sambo there. I say, Michael Sambo, listen, I am in the church, deep alive, where nobody writes a book. If it was a free place, my name would have been here. But I'm going to put your name as a small, no, you are a small person now. Who bothers about you? Which position do you occupy? By the way, they will know that you, they will know that you, what? I, I'm going to put your name. Bah! If anybody comes too closely to say, ha, ah, you are great, say, this is not my work. It is the work of Pastor Paul Rica. Because the, this book is the writing of an apostle. I saw the writing. I knew this is a fantastic book and writing. It's a book of wisdom in which you can never equal it. If they give you glory that you wrote this book, you will collapse. Refuse. Me, I will not be parading myself that I wrote the book. No. Why? I am in a church that will never wonder for discipline. I am, that's why I'm putting your name there. Now, tell God in your heart, this is not my work. I was not there when they were writing the book. Anybody can pick revelation from anywhere and write on it. That does not mean it belongs to the person who saw revelation. What if even that man has died? So, tell God like that and tell people who come closely to you. But if nobody comes, allow it. Let the people assume you wrote it. This boy didn't hear counsel. The praise on this book exalted him until he became offended that I was telling people I wrote the book. Uh, you are the, the people are telling me, somebody came to me and said, eh, eh, I thought even that you are the one. So you are not even the one giving me shame. Come, small boy. Are you not grateful that your name came up here? That the people are recognizing you? How many people saw revelation? Where are their revelations? So, that is pride. Go it before destruction. Don't accept the praise of me, whatever gift of God is in your life. If you want heaven, if you want the commendation of men, give all the glory unto the Lord. Number two, walk according to standard to be accepted by God. Walk according to standard. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 5. Hebrews chapter 8. Verse 5, it says, Who served unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle? For, see, seeth he, that thou make all things according to the pattern shot to thee in the mount. Make sure 
you follow the pattern that has been revealed to you by God. It is God doing his last work. It's God that raised Pastor Paul Ricker. It's God that gives this inspiration. However you preach, your preaching will not be like my preaching. Why? Because God put his stamp upon my life. Whoever represents the president and speaks, the power and aura that would come from him will not be when the, as when the president is there himself. It's like that. So it is not a place of show of intelligence, of how much knowledge of God you have known that they are playing the CDs of the international director. He said, no, I will tell you I have my word. God will not sanction your own. There is a, an ingredient he has put in the messages he has given the international director that he will never put in your own. It is said the formula of Coca-Cola has not been discovered. Mix your own. Mix all you can mix. It will be different from Coca-Cola. Is that what it is said? Mix whatever you want to mix. Because the secret is kept away. Therefore, if you want to do the service in holiness movement in your chapters, in your state, in your nation, to bring the same result, play the CDs. And sit down there and watch them. But when the time comes for you as you go to other places, opportunity comes for you to preach, you preach. Do, it, do your preaching too. It will not replace your preaching. But honor this landmark. Remove not the ancient landmarks which your fathers have said. I'm warning you because man is proud. Man wants to be like God. Man wants to build his kingdom. That's why you fail. What shall it profit you if you struggle to come to popularity and lose your soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? And you, when you notice that your coordinator is not playing this city, cry out to the headquarters. He's not a faithful man. He wants to replace the glory of the Lord. He wants to take over the glory of the Lord. Cry out to the headquarters. Otherwise, God is doing new, new things. New, new things. And if these messages are not being followed, you will be left behind. God said, this is my movement. He is the one giving the messages. Since you have come for conference for all these years, has any message been repeated? From the coming of Holiness Revival Movement, you have been hearing, have you seen any one message repeated? This is wonder. It's God that is doing it. New December, when December comes, you will see a new set of ministry, messages. Uh, new states. Because they are coming from above. They are coming from above. The Lord is working in his church to prepare the people for the rapture. Therefore, it's not the work of man. Don't take the glory of God. Submit. See that ye walk according to the pattern that is set before you in the headquarters. If you want commendation, if you want God to reward you, again, seek divine commendation. And not human praise. In Job, chapter 1, verse 1 and verse 8, chapter 2, verse 3, Job, chapter 1, I read, Verse 1. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. Yes. We read verse, let's read from verse 6 to 8. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Queens comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, 
from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feared God and eschewed evil. Can you see divine commendation? This is what you should seek. Let every man be a liar and let God be true. When people say he has the devil, he is visible, let God say, this is my only begotten son. Hear ye him. The testimony of God is above the testimony of man. How many people in Job's time would agree to this? It's immaterial. Because satanic men will not agree. But God has spoken it. My servant Job is perfect. My servant Job is upright. And there is none like him in all the earth. This is the creator, the father of righteousness that is commending Job. So seek this commend commendation. Let God commend you in your service. Let the Holy Spirit give you assurance. You're doing well. That is what you should look for. Very important. Chapter 2 of Job, verse 3. Chapter 2. Let me read verse 1 to 3. Again there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered, answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feared God and eschewed evil, and still he holdeth fast his integrity. Although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause, I permitted you to go and try him. You kill all his children. You kill all his riches. You destroy everything. You did all this. He never sinned. He gave glory to me. Job shaved, shaved his beard and bowed the head and worshipped me and declared I have given and I have taken away. I, he was zero. I, I, gave him, I gave him zero plus nine. It became nine. Now, I have taken away the nine I gave him. He is back to what? He is back to zero. Where, where is he blaming? Where, 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 where must he blame me? I gave what I gave. I parked my car under your tree, in your ha near your house. Everybody say, ah, we saw that you have a new car. You have a new car. Oh, you have a new car. But I came and carried my car and left. There was no more car back under that tree again. Come, which way have I offended you? I shouldn't carry my car. Job said, God has not offended. He's a perfect man. His understanding was right. His reasoning was right. His approach to difficulties of life was right. His approach to prosperity of life was right. And as a result, he sinned not against me. That's what Jesus, the God, told Satan. May he tell Satan like that about you. In your peace, in your pain, in your prosperity, in your suffering, in your chastisement, in your praise, may God find no sin in your life. May God announce you to people. May God announce you to people. Come. I'm saying this thing. Are you surprised? 
that God is announcing Pastor Porika worldwide, not known to me, everywhere in various nations of the world. He told me, I will advertise you. That's what he said. And he's doing it. And he's showing, for, he, he said, those who are accusing Pastor Rick, I came late. Because I have already started that advertisement a long time. And I will continue to advertise you. From children, from women, from men, from people of other tongues. Because this final war is a final battle. And the Lord will want to unite the church. That's why he's doing this thing. He wants to bring you to the knowledge of the truth. To the, he wants to bring the church to the unity of the knowledge of the Son of God. He wants to prepare the church for the rapture. And if that will be, he must lift up a man that has the truth. So that everybody should converge and learn from him. Through the internet, through the books, through the various means. And they know the truth. And the truth will set them free. That is the wisdom and more than just that. And it was what's the reason why the Lord is making this publicity? Wow. And it is true. He has been speaking of it long time. He told me right long in 2014, I will raise you up above the, the deeper life you came from. I, I will give you a name above that. The Lord said, I mean, I was wondering, deeper life that is like an ocean. How are you going to do it? I am God that has spoken. And I'm seeing the thing working out. We're going somewhere. What God is doing is for himself. Not for man. Don't see it for man. Else you will envy. Else you will, envy. You will be envying it. You will be wasting your energy. Envy has nothing to do about it. I myself have nothing to do about it. You have nothing to do about it. You can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. Nothing. Bury the truth, it will rise after three days. That's the world. Rather cooperate with the truth and receive the blessing of the truth. That is divine instruction and counsel to you. Yes. Seek divine commendation. In Revelation chapter 3, I read verse 7 to verse 11. Revelation chapter 3, verse 7. To verse 11. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia. Right. This thing said he that is holy. He that is true. He that had the key of David. He that opened it and no man shut it. And shut it and no man opened it. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. And no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, who say they are Jews, and are not, and do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation who shall come which, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. And he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him my new name. I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. Verse 13, everybody want to go. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. Simple. Let, let your church, let your chapter, let your denomination, let's say, receive divine commendation. Let it seek it, not the praise of man. Yes. 
Again, seek heavenly rewards and not earthly. Seek heavenly rewards and not earthly. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 13 to 16. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 13 to verse 16. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is, an heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he had prepared for them a city. All these fathers, they had in mind that there is another place, heavenly. Serving God would take them there. And they all pursued that. Abraham left the land of Uz and came to Canaan. The main thing that is inside him, they knew of heaven. That they were looking for heaven. And they all died in faith. The apostles, I mean the prophets, died in faith. They suffered for God. They died in faith. Looking for this heavenly reward. The apostles, Died in faith. Polycarp, at the age of, is it 100? Yes, 110. They were asking him to deny Jesus. He said, I've served God for 80 years, righteously. And I'm about seeing him now. He has not done me evil. And you say I should deny him. It's not possible. You can kill me. Every, they died in faith because they had the reward of heaven. And truly, God has prepared for them a city. Heavenly city, city of gold, city of light, city of delight, city of pleasure, city of eternity with him. Yeah, great city, great city, great city. God has prepared for them. Angels shall serve mankind. Angels shall be the servants to mankind. Because the Lord got them out of great tribulation. And the Lord shall reward them above the angels. Then, this is what the Lord is preparing for us on earth, on earth, who are serving him. Who are serving him. You had the story of the 40 men in the communist country that were arrested. Christians arrested for their faith. And they started torturing them until they began to die one by one. Anytime one died, an angel came from heaven and put a crown on him and took him to heaven. Gloriously, the security man that was there was watching it until he remained the last man, the 40th man. They said, Deny Jesus, deny Jesus. Doubt came into his heart. Where have these people gone? Hold your faith, hold your faith. There's a place, hold your faith. There's a place, hold your faith. Heaven is there. Don't allow doubt, don't allow doubt, don't allow doubt. Don't turn back from your ministry. Heaven is there. Oh, Pa is going by road, don't go back. Ruth, don't go back. There's a place. There's the God of Israel. He's a God of life. He's a God of heaven. He will reward you with heaven. Don't, 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 don't withdraw. Don't withdraw. Don't withdraw. Hold it firm. Hold it firm. There is heaven. It is the whom. It is the whom. My father's house. Jesus called it. My father's house. They are the mansions of heaven. They are there for you. Don't go back. Don't go back. Don't go back to the world. You Muslim convert. Don't go back. Don't go back to Islam. Don't go back to Islam. Don't go back to your gods. You that came out from gods. Don't go back. There's heaven. There's a great reward. There's eternity for you. There's pleasure. There's crown for you to wear. There's crown. Stars in your crown. Stars are waiting for you. Don't go back. That is the voice of God. But the 48 man denied Jesus because they, they convinced him. When he now said, okay, I'm no more for Jesus. The security man saw that an angel had already come holding the crown to put on his head. 
And when this man said, yes, I deny, the angel became demoralized and was turning back to fly back with the crowd. The security man jumped up and said, I am for Jesus. Uh, kill me now. I am for Jesus. I cannot allow this crown to go back. I am for Jesus. I am. This man didn't know what is happening. This man didn't know what God planned for him. He didn't know the angel that was holding the crown. I want to take his place. That is why the Bible says that which you have, this righteousness that you have, this righteous ministry that you have, this righteous calling that you have, this opportunity that you have, hold fast. Otherwise, somebody will take over your crown. Hold fast, otherwise somebody will take over your crown. You have suffered for long. God knows that you have suffered. God knows that you have suffered. He's ready to reward you with eternal life. He's going to put glory in your life. He will make you shine like angels. He will shine like a star. He said, don't allow anybody to take away your crown. Stand firm. Rise up upon your feet and say, God, I am going to start. This heavenly reward will be mine. No man shall take away my crown. No man shall take away my crown. I am for heaven. I am for heaven. I will go to heaven. I will serve until I die. I will serve until the rapture comes. I will serve. I will remain strong. I will remain righteous. I will remain faithful. I will not go back because of man, because of woman, because of anything. There is heaven. 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 There is the Father's house. It is real. It is real. The throne of God is real. The promotions of God for you are real. They are genuine. They are genuine. The Lord will bless you both on earth and in heaven. Therefore, don't turn away. Don't turn away for shame. Don't turn away for fear. Don't allow that. Hold fast. Let no man put, on your, put you aside. Don't because of a coordinator. Ah, he has offended me. He has done like that and you're going away. Don't go. Don't go. Don't go. Excellent ministry, excellent ministry. Go and run an excellent ministry. Don't mind the suffering, don't mind the suffering. Go and suffer for Jesus. Go and suffer for Jesus. You will rule with him. You will rule with him. You will rule with him eternally. You will sit on him with him on the Father's throne. You will sit with him on the Father's throne. Heaven is full of joy. 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 Joy, joy, joy. Full of joy, joy, joy. Heaven is full of joy. Heaven is full of joy. Heaven is full of joy, joy, joy. Heaven is full of 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 joy, 
joy, joy, heaven is full of joy, 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 heaven is full of joy, 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 heaven is full of joy, 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 heaven is full of 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 joy. 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 Oh joy, joy. Heaven is full of joy. Joy, joy, heaven is full of joy. Heaven is full of joy. Joy, joy, heaven is full of joy. Hey, heaven is full of joy. Heaven is full of joy. Joy, joy, heaven is full of joy. Joy, joy, heaven is full of joy. Joy, joy, heaven is full of joy. Heaven is full of joy. Heaven is full of heaven is full of joy. 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 Heaven is full of joy, heaven is full of joy, 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 heaven is full of joy, 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 heaven is full of joy, joy, joy. Hey, make your way to be there. Make your way to enter heaven. Joy, everlasting joy, everlasting joy, everlasting joy. Worship, worship, worship. Amen. Jesus name we pray you will be there you will enter heaven you will sing you will shout because the Lord has made you to enter heaven I will enter his gate with thanksgiving in my heart I will enter his court with praise come to heaven I will say 
This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for you made me glad when you enter there. So glad I will rejoice. So glad I will rejoice for he has made me glad when you enter there. Made me glad even in my heart. I will enter his court with praise. Praise the Lord. That the Lord has made, I will rejoice for He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I say He has made me glad. Will rejoice for He has made me glad. Ah, amen. He has made me glad. He has. When I get to heaven, I know I will see. I will see my loving Jesus and sing hallelujah, amen. When we get to heaven, we know we will see, we will see a loving Jesus and sing hallelujah, amen. Amen. Sing hallelujah. Amen. Sing hallelujah. I say when I get to heaven, I know I will see. I will see my master Jesus and sing hallelujah, amen. When I get to heaven, I know I will see. I will see my master Jesus and I will sing hallelujah, amen. When I get to heaven I know I will see I will see my loving Jesus and sing hallelujah amen Shout sing hallelujah, 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 amen, sing hallelujah, go oh, yeah, sing hallelujah,
Hallelujah. A wonderful prayer time is waiting for you. Jesus must be honored, must be honored, must be honored. Jesus must be honored in my life. Everything, hallelujah. God must be honored, must be honored, must be honored. Jesus must be honored in my life every day. Hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Keep on singing. Sing hallelujah. Your heart, oh, when they say, go marching in. When they say, go marching in. Oh, my father. One glorious morning we shall see a Savior. One glorious morning by and by. One glorious morning I shall see my Redeemer. One glorious morning by and by. Oh, by and by.
by and by. Morning, I shall see my Savior. Why glorious morning, by and by and by. Morning, I shall see my Redeemer. One glorious morning, by and by. One glorious morning, by and by. One glorious morning, you shall see your redeemer. One glorious morning, by and The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, holinessrevivalmovement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world, condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe
Jesus, I believe. 
I believe you. 